a word for morality. Amoralism, with which Nietzsche chastised the old untruth, is itself now subject to the verdict of history. With the decay of religion and its palpable philosophical secularizations, restrictive prohibitions lost their inherent authority, their substantiality. At first, however, material production was still so undeveloped that it could be proclaimed with some reason that there was not enough to go round. Anyone who did not criticize political economy as such had to cling to the limiting principle which was then articulated as unrationalized appropriation at the expense of the weak. The objective preconditions of this have changed. It is not only the social nonconformist or even the narrow-minded bourgeois who must see restriction as superfluous in face of the immediate possibility of superfluity. The implied meaning of the master morality, that he who wants to live must fend for himself, has in the meantime become a still more miserable lie than it was when a 19th century piece of pulpit wisdom. If in Germany the common citizen has proved himself a blonde beast that has nothing to do with national peculiarities, but with the fact that blonde bestiality itself, social rapine, has become, in face of manifest abundance, the attitude of the backwoodsman, the deluded Philistine, that same hard-done-by mentality which the master morality was invented to combat. If Cesar Borgia were, res were resurrected today, he would look like David Frederick Strauss, and his name would be Adolf Hitler. The cause of amorality has been espoused by the same Darwinists whom Nietzsche despised, and who proclaim as their maxim the barbaric struggle for existence with such vehemence, just because it is no longer needed. True distinction has long ceased to consist in taking the best for oneself, and has become instead a satiety with taking that practices in reality the virtue of giving, which in Nietzsche occurs only in the mind. Ascetic ideals constitute today a more solid bulwark against the madness of the profit economy than did the hedonistic life 60 years ago against liberal repression. The amoralist may now at least may now at last permit himself to be as kind, gentle, unegoistic, and open-hearted as Nietzsche already was then. As a guarantee of his undiminished resistance, he is still as alone in this as in the days when he turned the mask of evil upon the normal world to teach the norm to fear its own perversity.